And the last thing I wanted to talk about is the notion of runtime importing. You may have seen this a little bit in the malware class. Uh, you definitely see this in malware all the time. So it's an important thing. It's kind of used behind the scenes for the delay loading. So this is kind of the process which delay loading behind the scenes. When I had that hand wavy like stub code does something to load DLL and find function, how it, what it does is it uses these two Windows functions, load library and get clock address. And there's equivalents of these on Linux as well. I'm trying to remember them now. It's like DL load and I can't remember. But when we go over to the Linux VM, I can do the man page and look them up. But so basically the equip, um, load library and get proc address. The load library will first put a DLL into the memory of this current process. So if I have hello world, just my own hello world pro program, which normally just prints out hello world, <coughs> And I add in a call to the function load library. And I say load library, and let's say I want to load you know, mylib.dll. Load library takes a path to the DLL that you want to load, and it gives you back a handle to that DLL. And so the handle is this abstraction layer. And so you're not, I mean, it's supposed to be an abstraction, but in reality, this handle is actually the base address where that DLL got loaded. So you run load library, you give it the name of a DLL, it gives you back the base address where that DLL got loaded. Next, if you want to actually use that for use functions within that, well, most programmers don't know the P header format, so they don't know how to take that base address and go parse the DOS header to find the NT header to find the data directory and so forth, right? So how do normal programmers go look up a particular function? They use get proc address. So you get back the handle to the DLL, which is the base address, you feed that into get proc address, and behind the scenes, get proc address does all this parsing of the headers. And so you pass get proc address, you know, my function one. So I just loaded my DLL, and then I say, look up the address of my function one. And I store that into a local variable, or I store that into a global variable. And now if I want, I can treat that as a function pointer, and I can call directly to my function one within my C code. So behind the scenes, Delay load, if you look at the actual stub code that's running, delay load just does, it says, okay, I'm going to run load library if this DLL is not already loaded. And then I know that this stub corresponds to some particular uh, delay loaded function, and then I'm going to run get proc address on that particular function. And so, uh, yeah, that's all I want to say about that. You'll see malware use this basically, and then malware wants to potentially obfuscate their imports, right? We've been looking at nice, normal, uh, binaries. Nice normal binaries, you can go and look at the import names table and you'll see, oh, this calls, you know, this thing that talks over the network and you know now this thing is either, you know, sending packets or receiving packets or something like that. So malware wants to obfuscate its import names table essentially and they don't want to just have it in plain text the list of all the functions that they're importing and so what they'll do is they'll only import like load library and get proc address or they can go through some other rigmarole to not even import that and find it dynamically at runtime. But let's say we've got some malware that only imports two functions, those two functions, then what it can do is it can have its own, you know, data structure, its own global entry that it fills in once it starts running. It fills in the equivalent of an import address table, all while, you know, potentially having those names that it's passing in to get proc address, like, you know, XOR encoded or encrypted or whatever. We've got like some table of their, you know, virtual, their fake import names table, and they encrypt that, and then they decrypt it just in time when they start running, and then they pass those to get proc address to fill in their own private import address table. And then a malware analyst can't just look at the binary on disk and see, all right, it's importing these functions that manipulate the registry. It's importing these functions that talk over the network. So, uh, so yeah, get proc address and load library are very common. You'll see those used uh, in a lot of malware that's doing basic obfuscation. All right, so here's some fail and or win. The important thing is there will be a quiz later on what year the milk expired. So 1938, just FYI, teaching them a test. 